you might just be able to pick up the call to prayer there in the distance in the town of Chibalang. As we turn round, that is southwest, and of course we're in the southwest monsoon. And as you can probably see, the build-up of clouds. It's now happening daily, every afternoon, it seems to pour. Here's some old faces we might recognise. Guy, Boots, having their lunch. Up there, your chai. This is the tale of the second week of our mast refit. Week one went brilliantly, got all the fittings on, apart from the spreaders and the cables of course. Week two has been a bloody nightmare. We spent the first day yesterday trying to feed a cable up and down the conduit that runs inside the mast. Uh, and this is for our VHF cable, which is a thicker RG213 cable, and also the steaming light cable that uh, meets the mast about where you see Moon now. The problem was that an old mouse, which is a piece of string used to guide cables up and down the mast, had come untied from the top and had dropped down inside and unfortunately it had bundled up into a very tight ball and it meant that it created this block. So we have spent the last day and a half trying to unblock this with all manner of gizmos and uh, steel rods, string, uh, cable, fishing line and eventually we started heating up rods with the uh, blowtorch and uh, that sort of burnt its way through the, the, uh, the, the knotted mess but it's been absolutely slashing it down today and Moo and I have had absolutely no luck whatsoever with trying to budge this piece of uh, mouse that has got stuck in the mast. Meanwhile I left my camera in the rain there. It got soaking wet it wasn't in a waterproof bag. Turned it on and it's working. But more importantly, take a look at this. That is the old mouse. And you can see Dang is pulling out the remainder of the bits of the old mouse. How have we got it out? Look at that. Moo, show me this. This is Moo's cunning idea. It's a, uh, how many millimetres? 25 maybe millimetre drill bit welded onto five metres of stainless steel rod. Attached it to the drill and he's drilled his way through this great big lump. Look at this, it's amazing, it's just it's a massive uh, molten nylon. Well done, Moo. Yeah, okay. A <laughs> little bit more. A <laughs> little bit more, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. This is very exciting. Well, it's the next day, it stopped raining, and our five meter rod, which was extended to six meters, uh, now has to be extended another meter because I've managed to drill out another clump of uh, old mouse cable, but it's still blocked.
safety hurt first here in PSS. Now you would have thought that having just filmed Jung welding that extra metre to the world's longest drill bit that I'd have registered how hot a white hot weld can be. But no, I was so keen to remove that last blockage that in my haste I shoved the rod up the conduit and yes, as I fed it in I grabbed the rod at exactly where that weld was made not five minutes before. The weld was so hot that even after pouring water on the joint it still hissed and fizzled. Needless to say, I now have a rather large blister on my hand. I won't be making that mistake again. I think I'll wait for that to cool down. So here we are at the centre of the mast. Having put the uh, 7 metres up after burning my hand, I uh, then put the VHF cable up attached to a welding rod and got as far as the hole in which the cable for the steaming light goes in and lo and behold I could see in the conduit this green tape which I was able to pull out which in turn is attached to some old line which is in turn attached to some of that original uh, greeny yellow uh, mouse line so that could be our problem the next step now is to put the VHF cable back up and see how far up it goes before it gets blocked again. Lesson to be learnt from that though, avoid using tape and avoid using multi-strand string. Next morning, I forgot to give you an update yesterday afternoon. Thought I'd do it now before that cloud comes in, which I was just showing you. It's been raining constantly the last two, three days. Rather frustrating. Rather less frustrating. This is the uh, centre of the mast. That goes down that way to the end. And that goes down that way. I've managed to connect the two, and I think. I've managed to clear the blockage. This is very good news. So this is Pong with our breaker panel and we're using our original breakers which are these two but because we've got so many more electrics now we have two additional breaker sets and what we're trying to work out is how to make them look uniform once they're all mounted so it just means a bit of uh, juggling around um, swapping panels over and then eventually what we're going to do is we're going to get a piece of acrylic and put it over the top as a new plate and uh, use some stickers, get some stickers made up to label the various breakers but ultimately what I'm after is something that looks neat and uh, is all the same colour so it looks a bit messy at the moment Someone got in contact with us recently asking us about the electrics and it's a bit too early yet to actually talk through what we're going to do but uh, just to give you a quick idea of the various ports we're going to have on the boat here we are in the cabin and over there we're going to have a uh, 220 stroke 12 volt double plug socket and that used to be down there on the floor but we're going to put it up there which is just a bit easier to get to because that's where the door opens and closes uh, coming through the heads chart table we're going to put another 220 12 volt uh, plug probably somewhere down there in this cavity as well as a USB port as well the USB ports uh, all have the same fascias as the light switches we're choosing which is quite nice apart from the main lights which we're going to put up here and up in there We're going to have a four-way switch here and that's going to control the, uh, the red and the white lights there as well as the mood lighting which we're going to have 
around here and even under the chart table seat and on this side we're going to have a six-way switch and that's split into port and starboard and that's going to operate the uh, lighting in the saloon obviously port starboard and uh, one of the three switches is going to operate the top lighting uh, the second switch is going to operate uh, the mood lighting here and the third one will be the mood lighting down there so we have a standard domestic six-way switch and we also have in this box a dimmer switch and the idea is, is that we want to be able to dim the mood lighting so obviously the overhead lighting is purely just for uh, you know when we're working so they just we just turn those on and off but what we'd like to do is to control the mood lighting uh, with the dimmer switch unfortunately it is rated at only 8 amps and uh, with the amount of mood lighting we've got in this saloon I'm not sure it can control it all so we'll have to sit down with Sombat um, we have uh, another 240 12 volt plug socket down there you can see and then we're going to put another one just here since this is where the table is and quite often we sit at the table needing to plug things in over in the corner over there we'll have another USB port and the idea is that you can just uh, charge up uh, phones and um, run your tablet from there and as we said in uh, Liz's office she's got her box there up in the cockpit we're going to have two repeaters for the BNG system as well as various uh, small ports uh, for further charging and for the uh, floodlight to plug into and on the binnacle we're going to have a, an, an 8 inch touchscreen chart plotter and that's in addition to the 12 inch one which is down below in the chart table why do we want two chart plotters? well a um, couple of reasons really we've never had a chart plotter at the uh, at the binnacle before it's a bit of a luxury but um, it saves having to run up and down to the chart table which quite often I'd end up doing when we were coming into harbours or new places uh, coral reefs and so on um, and it just uh, felt like it would be a bit safer to be um, behind the wheel at all times uh, with that information in front of us but also by having the chart plotter down in the chart table it means that we can uh, do some passage planning especially when the weather's bad and wet and uh, it just means we have that extra luxury fortunately with the B&G system uh, with the connection of an ethernet cable the two can talk to each other uh, so you only need uh, one set of chart data and uh, they share it between the two of them so we've got two different types of LEDs we're putting in the boat We've got uh, IP68 which is completely waterproof. Didn't particularly want these inside the boat but they, uh, one company we bought all our LEDs from didn't have any of the uh, IP65. Doesn't matter, we bought some anyway. So the mood lighting is uh, slightly less powerful. I think 100 LEDs per metre versus, uh, sorry, 5 metres versus 300 LEDs per 5 metres of the IP68. So it means that we're putting the IP68 and the main channel's in the ceiling and then the mood lighting is going to be uh, the ones around the side of the boat except in the galley where we're going to have brighter LEDs up the top there and then as I said in the clip last time one red and one white in the galley here by the time we've put the ceiling panels on we've got the velcro on both sides and the ply down like so with the veneer so the channel with the lights is quite deep so what Dang has been doing is spray painting the channels black as well as the sides of the uh, ceiling panels as well this is the saloon ceiling and as you can see Dean has been putting up the LED strip lights. If you get a close look you can see that Dang has actually sprayed around here a nice black colour. The idea being that when you look up at it all you see is black when the lights are not on.
ันนี้พาไปหาหน้าหลักพาไปกันทั้งทีถ้ามีเวลาทำจะพาไปทีพอมส์ now fixing the fridge door now that Dang has sprayed it and Pom has very kindly given us this fantastic solid stainless steel spring that keeps the door open. There we go. Break the spring. Hold that nice big handle and it comes. So Dean, tell us what's been happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our second in command electrician and he has been wiring up the very first LED light in the galley which is a, okay, sure. uh, a red LED. Sure. Show me. Yeah, of course. Please, he's going to turn it on for us. It's got a little 12 volt pack. One, one minute. Very exciting, Dean. Okay, Dean, turn it on. Oh, look at that. So there's our IP68 in the galley and the red light as well. Obviously they won't come on at the same time, they've got separate switches, but it uh, gives you a little taste. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. Cap. Okay.